shows that people will probably roll up over the next couple of minutes as they work out morning tea's finished. So welcome to the uh, 2015 Multimedia and Music Miniconf. Um, the Miniconf has its own website at the address which is on the screen at the moment, um, which is sort of the definitive source for information about the Miniconf. The timetable is mirrored on the LCA website and over time things like slides and um, recordings of today might make it onto that site as well, I'm not sure. I'm going to endeavour to try and get slides and things up onto the site there as quickly as I can, just as a record of the day. Um, today we've got three sessions, a uh, morning session, then there's lunch, um, a G-streamer session at um, 13.20 and then an afternoon session at uh, 15.40 after afternoon tea. So this morning um, we've got uh, four speakers uh, going to present on a variety of topics as outlined there and in the, um, in the program as well on the, on the web. Um, for people wanting to ask questions, we just ask that you wait for this mic to be passed around, not so that people can hear you in the room necessarily, but so the streaming and the recording people can hear what you have to say and the speaker doesn't have to repeat the question. Um, for those who are giving um, talks, uh, if someone asks a question and it's not mic'd, if you can just sort of briefly summarise the question so that, uh, again, the streaming guys and people who are watching the stream uh, have a chance to um, pick up what the question was. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to invite uh, Katie Ford and uh, she's going to give a talk entitled Disentangle a New Fangled Image Mangler. And yes, I did practice that. You practiced it, I didn't. And I'm already losing this thing. Everyone can see that? Both sides? Can I be he heard on the... I've got to move it down. Yeah, it kind of, it's falling off my ear. I don't think my ears are big enough. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll just not move. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. They're sort of burning already. Does that? Is that better? Maybe yeah. position-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yes. All good. All good. Lock the door. No. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Katie. I made a thing and I'm going to present it to you. I would ask with this questions thing, unless I actually put my hand up, please don't yell out the answer. This is going to be a journey about how I learnt a whole lot of things. Some of the answers are going to be easy, but if I put my hand up, you can shout out. I was going to bring cookies, but they got taken away at customs. So, a little bit of background. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, LCA. It has been two years since my last actual Windows job, but I used to do this kind of XP stuff. Um, and it's flickering, that's not good. Are there demons in it? No, okay. So this used to be my desktop environment. I used to code Oracle in Windows. Um, but this was my environment and this was my desktop. I had a really, really tiny screen and I had this little tiny image that I found somewhere on the internet and I wanted to have it as a wallpaper. In XP, you can put it as a wallpaper, and then you can stretch it, but that looked horrible. So what I wanted to do was make something that wouldn't look horrible. And you can do this in four steps. These are going to be repeated all the way through the presentation, so remember them. Find your background. Resize it to your resolution. Move the image around to where you want it, and then fill in the background that was probably white. How do you do this on Windows? Hands up. How do you do this on Windows? MS Paint. MS Paint! I would throw you a cookie. So, method one, MS Paint. You find your image, you grab the little thing and you drag it around, and then you grab the thing and then you move it to the corner, and then you get the little eyedropper and then you fill it in. So, how do you do this less manually in paint? Well, you can do, like, key things, but no one here is really interested in that. You can do the entire thing using a keyboard, but... 
Who does that? It's Windows. So, many months later, I got hired for a company. I actually work at Anchor now. There's 19 of us, a couple of them are possibly in the room. Um, I wasn't allowed to use Windows there because no one's allowed to use Windows there. I was given the option of Ubuntu or Gentoo. I, I, I chose Ubuntu because I could spell it. Um, so I needed a way to be able to make my desk backgrounds because I got a big screen. It was like 24 inches or something instead of 17. So I needed to redo all my backgrounds because none of them would fit because they'd all stretch. So how do you programmatically make a background in Linux? Gentleman in the hat. Image magic. Ta-da! <laughs> Image magic. So this is literally how I learned to use a whole lot of command line tools, so bear with me. In Image Magic, you've got a executable called convert, and you can resize things, and you can give it your before image and your after image, except it stretches. That's not, not what we want. We want to make it the same resolution, but we want to move it. So you can extend it, except in this order, it resizes it first, and then it extends it, so it's still stretched, but it's the right resolution. If you swap that, you can get it in the right resolution, but it's in the wrong corner. So you set gravity, not the Sandra Bullock film, and then you can get it in your corner, and then as long as you know the background color, you can fill it in. So then you get a background. Problem. This little hash magic thing. How do you, how can you, on the command line without human interaction, get the background color of an image? Hands up. Well, the gentleman in the hat said it before, you can actually use just image magic again. There's this wonderful thing where you can analyze the image in a histogram and you can output it in an image. So you get your image and then you do things and then you get another image. Not really that helpful. Let's move the mouse. But you can actually get it in a format that's machine readable, except there's a few lines that come out in that output because it tells you exactly how many pixels of each color are in your image. But you throw 16 colors at it and it will at least reduce it down to a standard set. And then you can sort it because this is how I learned how to do sort and head and trim and cut. So you can literally take the output from this and then you head it and then you cut it and trim it and then you can get that little hex value. Trim? Translate. Oh, okay. There you go. I learned something. I, it's TR, trim. Well, in, in that one, it's like you, you space. Dash S is for space? Oh, there you go. I learned something. This is cool. So, I can take my Rhino image and I can get the color and then I can throw that in my script because I can make it useful by throwing it in a bash file. And so I give it the image and then I give it the resolution. I give it where it wants to go and I create an image. But I then realized that, hey, I work at a web hosting company and this is a shell script. So guess what I did? Close. <laughs> Rails. I wrapped my shell script in Rails and added some bootstrap and some fanciness so you can upload an image you can see your image with a really nice preview. That took a lot of time. I'm just like, oh, this is how I learned most of Rails, except for the stuff I was actually doing at work at the time. But you can upload an image, and it would automatically create a few for you, and it would be wonderful. So I was pretty happy with this. This was all ho hosted up on OpenShift, so it was nice. It just worked. And then I came back to it, and it had broken. Uh, turns out I got popped, because you're not supposed to wrap a shell script in Ruby. Um, so make sure if you're ever going to do this, sanitize your uploads and don't just use backticks in web server code ever. Um, yeah. So uploads are bad unless you sanitize them. So how about I just pre-render all the images I want? Fun story. I found this two years after I found that little image first. I didn't realize it could come on a t-shirt. And then I bought the t-shirt and I found it. And it turns out that this particular store has the source images of their shirt in a really nice format. So you can get all the shirts because it goes 999, 1000, 1001, all the way through to I think they're up to 6,000 6, images now. So with a great big uh, recursive grep, I could pull W, get or curl or whatever I used, you could pull them all down and then for every single resolution, 
generate them all. So I could make a great big image cache. So this was big. Um, 200 gig or something because I wasn't using proper compression and it was 10 resolutions for every image and there were 6,000 images and it just was big. But I pre-generated them all for all the right things. Except who can see what's wrong at the start? That's not actually a resolution. Um, I, I transcribed it wrong and I also sort of filled up my VPS. <laughs> yeah, so what I want to do is dynamically create images that I want at the time that I want them, not fill out my disk, not have the disk be popped, or the VPS popped. Can you pop a disk just by, oh, anyway, with a hammer maybe, no. Um, I want to just create what I want. So, obligatory cat pictures. This is a service that gives you sized cat pictures as a service. You can use it for when you're templating and stuff as opposed to just using a placeholder. And it will give you cats. But the nice little URL here gives you a width and a height. So I decided, that's cool. I'm going to replicate this. So I made an API that would take the ID of an image from that particular store and a height and a width and it would generate a wallpaper for you. That's not really as good as I want. As I said, I work at a web hosting company. I could make an API or I could make a website. So what do you do? You wrap your API in a website. And this is what I'm up to today, which is that's a real site and it actually works. And I'm going to totally show a demo if I click the right button. Haha. -ha. So this is the live uh, website. It's actually a domain. It's not hackery. This, um, I haven't changed my EGC host or anything. So I can click any of these and it'll make the right resolution for me. So I can click a thing and that won't work. Why won't that work? No, it'll totally work. Why won't it work? I know. Okay, so what's happened is because I plugged it in and this was preloaded, it didn't get my right resolution. So now I'm on the right resolution for this and I should. There we go, see? It resized it, you get the great big black thing and then you get a supernova. Yeah. I actually own all these shirts, so I don't feel too bad reusing the artist things as much. Anyway, so the main thing that drives this is there's no real way to get the resolution unless you tell it to, so you can do this thing and change it. But guess how you get the resolution? Yeah, JavaScript, that. That's all you do, because it'll actually tell you the resolution of your current thing. And because I plugged in the VGA, it still had my native resolution of 16900, and then I refreshed the page and it got the right one. So you just use that, and then you tell it to go to the uh -huh. API, and that's, I thought that was really cool. So all the code is open source. I've run for about half the time I'm supposed to, which I was assuming that there'd be like more pre-talking or we'd be late or something. <laughs> but if anyone has any questions that aren't trolling, please, don't pick on me because I used to do Windows. Everyone has to start somewhere. Um, no? Anyone? No? Well, in that case, I'm done because there's a cat picture and it says yay and I'm done. Aww. I've got just a very quick question, I guess. Um, yeah. So We've got to wait for a mic, though, otherwise I'll have to repeat you. So uh, I take it your web hosting company uh, generally works with Ruby? Uh, on Rails then? This entire project has been going for me for about four years. The Ruby part was about two years ago and we don't actually use Ruby anymore. Uh, okay. So the next iteration of this would be in our current language which would be Haskell. I really do not want to try to make a wrapper for Image Magic in Haskell just yet. Yeah. That would be fun, but not exactly safe. Well, I, I probably wouldn't get popped because it's still safe, but yeah. yeah well, uh, so. But, but it's just as an FYI, PHP has a really good image magic library as well. I've heard um, PHP League has a nice wrapper for that. Except I tried to use that when someone told me it, and then Composer broke. And then I tried to bug fix Composer, and that's not really something I wanted to do. <laughs> so I stopped. I worked out what that was, though. Um, so the version of that didn't have the Composer widget that says a requirement is the... GD compiled version of PHP. 
except the version that was coming down from the composer packagist was version 1. And they fixed this in 105, but composer didn't know the 105 existed. So I actually submitted a, a fix saying, here's the thing. It's like, no, it's already there. I'm like, but, but the packagist doesn't work. And yeah, so as soon as you start debugging the package manager for a language that you really don't want to touch, that's when you start stepping away and reevaluating your life choices. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not entirely dissimilar stuff uh, with the, well, no, completely different, like this was just... You've got to put the... Sorry, I, I'm not sure how sensitive the mic is. Uh, yeah, similar sort of um, image resizing sort of stuff with PHP, but not nearly as smart as that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really fun because the, the algorithm thing for the, um, where is it? Back, 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 back. This, this thing, uh, it turns out that's actually really slow. Yeah. Um, you can do it a whole lot better by just getting the corners and checking like all of eight points around the edges. Yeah. Except in the, this one, the algorithm that I had would take the purple of his little explosion because that was in the top corner and then make the entire thing purple. <laughs> Yeah. That looked pretty impressive, actually. It did. It did actually look impressive, but yeah, anyway. Um, how do I go to the end? End. I'm taking long form questions, even though you're not supposed to, because I've got so much time left. That's okay, yeah. That's all good. Yeah, okay, cool. Any other questions, qualms, comments? Do you want, do you want me to bring back the cat pictures? Or? No? Okay. How are we for time? We're good. Are we good? Can I stop talking now? You can stop talking. Yay! Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so we've got a brief five-minute interlude while we'll change over to the next speaker, who's uh, Ben Savage, uh, and then he's going to be uh, talking on learning to sight read with PHP and Lily Pond. I've muted that, so I've just got to press and hold until it flashes through.